Welcome to Popcast Deluxe, your psycho CEO of Weekly Cultural Review. I am John Caramonica, a critic at the New York Times. I'm Joe Coscarelli. I'm a reporter at the New York Times. This well, is us. This is us. Uh, now. <laughs> this is you then. This is me now. Uh, we're going to talk about Jay. Like, are pop stars okay? <laughs> They're going through it. Are they? Literally. I mean, we're going to get They're into flailing. this. They're that I, I was watching the J-Lo movie. Movie. And I, 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 I was agog. My my jaw was dropped yeah. the entire time. Yeah, it's event cinema. We're gonna get into this in a minute. I I do want to say two things, three things before we get into it. One, subscribe. It's YouTube.com/slash/popcast. There's a button if you're watching, because like, why wouldn't you be watching? There's a button. Click that button. Two, uh, Pat. Who some of you know from the Discord and from the Facebook group, uh, Pat has put us on TikTok. We've been on TikTok for a couple of weeks. There are clips. I did a little live reaction after the Super Bowl, after the Grammys. That's TikTok.com slash Popcast Deluxe. And the third thing, you may have caught this, but I made a Zazzle. A lot of merch. This is merch. Look, people have been asking for mugs. I realized I didn't want to be in the mug shipping business. That seems like a dangerous, like I'm just mm -hmm. me in my house with bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. It's not a great thing. Popcast mugs are on Zazzle. They're official. Someone someone in the Facebook group was like, is this official? <laughs> Nothing we do is quite official. <laughs> it's, sure. But it's all very official. Yes, it's extremely official. Um, there are mugs. There's a dog bowl. I just, I don't know. I was feeling frisky one night. Uh, there's a Zazzle. So go ahead and get a mug. Get some playing cards. Get a skateboard deck. Proceeds go to Neediest Cases Fund? Yes. Which is not us. Not us. The New York Times Neediest Cases Fund. We do have needs, but not those needs. Um, uh, uh, skateboard deck. If you do get the skateboard deck and you rip some tricks on it, like, send Be us. the one. Yeah, send us a video. Like, Be obviously, we're going to show your video. Like, duh. Um, anyway, that's the shilling. Uh, because we're okay, but pop stars. They're not okay. <laughs> Especially the ones who have been around a long time. They're going through it. They don't know how to not be the center of the world. And I think that's, And they are, and I want to say, they are most assuredly not the center of the world anymore. And that's how you Certainly end up- Certainly generationally. Yes. And that's how you end up with Jennifer Lopez's new visual album. You must respect the ebb and flow of the universe. Well, there's a, yes, there's, there's an, an album, album, and there's a visual thing. There's also another film, yeah. like a making of. Yeah. It's with, like being rolled out in parts. With some Benefer. Is this, re is it giving Renaissance? <laughs> yeah, this is act, so act two is where we want to spend most of our time. Act two of This Is Me Now. This is a, what, like an hour and change uh, music video? Sure. Narrative. Narrative. Narrative music video. Uh, it reminds me a little bit, okay, in like the early VHS era. Okay. Where like pop stars were like, I'm like spreading my wings. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're going to make a 17 minute something and like sell it on a VHS tape. It's giving that, yep. but at a $20 million price tag. You reported. think that's where the, that, that's what the budget was? It was, I mean, there's like a variety article or something that's like, why Jennifer Lopez spent $20 million of her own money or something. So this is a collaboration with Dave Myers. Sure. We'll just, get there. Sure. Play it straight. Play um, it, say it. Say, yeah, talk yeah. about it like it's normal. Dave Myers, <laughs> one of the most storied music video directors of all time. This is the guy behind, you know, Lose Control. You know, yeah, this yeah. is Missy Elliott. This yeah, is yeah. like. Every important video from like the late 90s, every, a lot of hip hop videos, yeah. late 90s into like the mid 2000s. But then this is also and, the Dave Myers who made me the Taylor Swift video. You know, late period Dave Myers, we'll call it hit or miss. Yeah. Like for miss, every miss or hit. <laughs> yeah. For every um, laugh now, cry later, there's a way too sexy. You know. Uh, do you like the way too sexy video? Low key. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. I thought maybe. Um, but so this the it, also with Ben. We should just get it out of the way. There's Ben Affleck. In the credits on this thing, and also on the screen, like minimally. Well, I could have used, frankly, a little bit more Ben Affleck. <laughs> I thought, like the fact that 
I got more from Ben Affleck in the Duncan commercial right. in the Super Bowl. Especially with the outtakes. Yeah. yeah. No introduction, my partner. Sometimes it's really hard to be your friend. You said you were going to support me. Dunkies! Don't, don't go away. My heart. Why you dunking me, girl? Why you dunking me? Dunking! My heart. Like, I got better Ben there than in this film. It's like a waste of talent. He's right there. He's in the house. So this is J-Lo's comeback album. It's been, what, like 10 years uh, since a J-Lo solo album. And it's very much about her journey. It's very much about her journey through love, uh, her three divorces, yes. and now being in a place where she can be with her one true person, who is her old one true person, Mr. Affleck, you know, Oscar winning <laughs> actor and director, Ben Argonaut, Affleck. The Argonaut. Uh, and how she got to the place where she was comfortable enough with herself to find true love. And look, Girl, who can relate, right? <laughs> who can relate? Like it's a I timeless just, dream. I'm try, I, you see my cheekbones, right? <laughs> I'm trying so hard to keep a straight face while you're describing what's happening here. Uh, just, just keep. I almost yeah, like I it's almost keep... better to he, have you just play it straight. Just keep yeah. keep saying what happens, so, and I'm gonna. The yes. internal pressure on my cheekbones is out of control. So the framing device for this is the Puerto Rican myth of Alida and Taru. Yes. Uh, which is a lost love story. The There's a hummingbird motif. Yes. And we begin in J-Lo's heart, <laughs> which is like steampunk. This is like a Dave Myers thing. Dave Myers loves like a steampunk uh, factory, factory <sighs> CGI aesthetic. And this, this is like, li- <laughs> just as a sidebar, I don't know, like, What's the AI program that makes art? Yeah. Like uh, Dolly. Um, sure. Yeah. This film it's is one of them. There's a lot of Dolly yeah. in this film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of This Dolly. is what was fed into the computers yes. to create. I mean, honestly, CGI artists all over the world are probably like really pissed about AI. But then if this is what AI comes up with, like maybe they're <laughs> they'll be okay. Um I can't I can't do this anymore. I, I, I just want to get a couple more plot points in there and then we can talk about what it means. Are you and going to say the words zodiacal council? <laughs> yes. But first, we open uh, after the heart factory thing or before. I the time is time is a stretchy it's truly concept. A flat circle. <laughs> it's truly a flat circle. In this, in this film. Um but she's riding across the ice. Uh, oh, on the back of a, on the back of Ben's motorcycle. In, like, seemingly an homage to the Bound 2 video. Oh, I didn't think of it that. Okay, sure. I don't know if it's actually no, an homage. I don't think so. there's, there's more ripoff slash homage that I want to get to later. Um, remind me, specifically yeah. in the intervention scene. Um, <laughs> but she's riding across the, mo- uh, the, the like, ice, ice land sure. with Ben Affleck. And then there's, like, a big crash. Maybe then you go back in time to, to her heart. Uh, Fat Joe plays her therapist. Great. Like, honestly, <laughs> you know, a little contrived, a little lumpy in the line delivery, but great. I, I thought he was good. Incredible sweaters. On Fat Joe. Incredible sweaters. <laughs> like, look, I really like how Fat Joe dresses IRL. I genuinely do. Never thought I'd hear anyone say the words, let alone you. But okay. I really like it. Yeah. I think that he has a really interesting sense of color Mm -hmm. and he wears clothes that are like really well proportioned to his body and often in unexpected fabrics. His new body. Yes. But it's like, he wears clothes that make sense for him. Mm -hmm. Obviously he's like an allotted sneakerhead, et cetera. But like, I genuinely think he dresses well. He dressed himself for the JLo movie. I don't. I think he was styled in (laughs) well, quote, quote, quiet luxury. Yeah. And I thought, All the sweaters were incredible to the point where I literally walked up to the television to Google image search one of the sweaters. You photographed the J-Lo movie like it was a concert? Yes, I did in my house, in my (laughs) living room. And it was an incredible Missoni Jacquard cardigan. And he was killing it. He was good. He was really good playing Dr. Melfi. Um, Um, Anyway, I just had the Fat Joe sweater. Like my notes are literally like Fat Joe sweaters. And then the last thing I want to say... Before I, lo- before I absolutely lose it. Plot wise, is that a lot of the film in between the songs there are songs. There are songs. They are extremely like biographical. Yes, and they are not in the same order as the album. 
uh, which I thought was an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they follow a narrative, yes, <laughs> loosely, uh, but in between in the dialogue stuff, there is a zodiacal council with like a f- flex of casting. I don't get it. Libra and Leo are supposed to work. It's it's a thing. No, nobody likes a drunk boy. What's with her and all the bad boys? Any of those people there on the same day? Oh, good question. It's a big thing in the in the plot of the film of whether the astrological signs of J-Lo and her lovers align. And in fact, like, maybe, maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. What's your sign? Hers? No, yours. Leo. You? That's a problem, apparently. <laughs> uh, I'm a Libra. Okay. Also a problem, What's apparently. our chemistry like? I, I don't know. Someone tell us tell in the us. comments. Yes, yeah. tell us. Um, but, okay, j- I'm just going to throw out some names uh, on the Zodiac Council. This, I didn't like. The people, the casting does not match their real astrological signs. I know because Post Malone plays Leo. And I was like, oh, Post Malone, big Leo energy. And I looked it up. Not not true. Uh, weird. Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty. <laughs> Sad guru. Jane Fonda. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> uh, Kiki Palmer. Kim Petras. <laughs> <laughs> I, wait, can I pull one more? I think I'm out. You Jennifer got Lewis. One? Jennifer Lewis. Um... Insane. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. There's also, I read a little bit about, I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm holding so much back, yeah. but like I read a little bit of the press and like someone interviewed Jane Fonda and Jane Fonda was basically like, I kind of told her not to make this movie. Oh, and then, or okay. like, not told, like was like. True wisdom. <laughs> yeah, like, or was like, I sort of like pushed her. Like, why do you want to tell this story? Sure. But apparently then just capitulated and was like, sure, I'll play Sagittarius or whatever. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> what is the check like for Jane Fonda or Post Malone? I wonder if they worked for. Free. Is it all on the strength of like, I feel like I'm it's on J-Lo? The arm. I feel like it's on the arm. You think Ben made the call? No, I think J-Lo. You think it's like no, future think- casting in an Affleck film? Benny Medina. Oh, Benny Medina. That'd be my guess. Okay. J-Lo's longtime yeah. manager. Okay. All right. Call you me. like this movie? <laughs> no, no. Like, this, this is... No. It's the wrong question. It's the wrong... Okay. So, I watched it last night, and I had seen a little, couple things in advance, like yeah. press stuff, but I had not read any... And it went a little viral in clips. There you go. Yeah. I had not read any reviews. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I was like... Let me see what you know. What are people saying about it? And I was like, I wonder if he, if it's even getting reviewed. Yeah. You know, it's on Amazon. No, it's Prime. on it's on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, 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 no, but I didn't know. But I was like, oh, maybe people are ignoring this. You know, there's so many trite pop star documentaries that I was like, oh, maybe people just aren't taking this seriously. This is not a trite pop star documentary. It's absolutely not. It's like it's ambish. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Um, the thing that really jumped out at me about the reviews is how straight-faced they are. I know. <laughs> they are so straight. They are just like, yep. and then this happened. That's what I was just th- doing. I know, and I was like, <laughs> I'm bubbling inside. They're like, then this happened, and here's the narrative. And it's like, if you are receiving this film on the level of text and not meta text, if you are receiving this film on the level of art, and not commerce. I mean, and obviously those things can coexist. All those things, but like, if that is the level yours, you are not doing your job. Like, I'm sorry. Did you see in the opening credits like the MGM logo, and it was like art for art's sake. <laughs> like that's the <laughs> motto. Did you catch that? That was that was sickening. Yeah, that was unreal. Look, I, let's. I am. This is going to be a tough one. I like Jennifer Lopez a lot. One of the great actresses of the 2000s, I think. Oh, okay. I really think she's incredibly good in yeah. films. Uh, and I think we're going to talk a little bit later about great Jennifer Lopez moments. I want to be clear. I really like Jennifer Lopez. Same. Um, I, I see this film as a symptom of a larger existential crisis about how pop stars are allowed to age. And that's why we're here. Is it? <laughs> sure. It's what we've said. Um, Jennifer Lopez has not been a successful musician in quite a while. And apart from maybe two or three years in the early 2000s, maybe has never been truly a successful musician. She Is this I hits. Love You Poppy slander? Wow. Oh, good. Frank, fine. I, I, sit, I sit corrected. <laughs> um, Jennifer Lopez 
has, I think, over the course of her career been advertised as sort of like, she can act, she can dance, she can sing, she can be a famous person, you know, been in all these high profile relationships, she's a public facing A-list star. Yes. The music hasn't always held up that end of the bargain. Correct. Um, and so coming back after 10 years, I, I wonder if the conversations around that in that world are like, how do we make this the biggest event possible? And obviously doing a film like this makes it a big event. Does it? Well, but this we'll is what I'm saying. This, yeah. It makes it a big event, yes. but the event is not the music. Yeah. The event is this. And now you have made a film, film that is literally just meme fodder. Yeah. And I don't think that that's what she was intending to do. Definitely not. I also think there's a version of this idea that really, really, really can work, but she, I don't know if Jennifer Lopez is funny. Like, I don't think she's like, wants to poke fun at herself. It she is not Mariah to, Carey. No, she wants to dig into obviously things that she's dealing with, but she's not, she's not like making herself the butt of the joke. It's quite she, sincere. Yeah, and I think to do a visual narrative this ornate and dolly coded and uh, uh extravagant but have it be so sincere yeah. to your point is it feels like the wrong tone if this had been straight punchlines like really making yourself the butt of the joke and and again not everybody's up for that and not everybody's good at that certainly not jayla from what we know of no her. and but that version of it with this excess that dave myers brings that's maybe something but this as it is let's just say it's not really working this album came out on friday uh was did not seem to hit did not seem to hit streams are not this, did, healthy didn't we come didn't we talk about this like three weeks ago where i was like i didn't even know the jlo album was coming yeah but it because like the new music friday it was like number 70 on yeah. new music friday and i mean it's not going to be that much higher probably on the billboard charts this is not an a-list grand return for a pop diva in the way that it seemingly was conceived like i want to know how many times in the group texts and the slack channels and the boardroom meetings like the word lemonade was said yeah and like these, are, these things are this not, not on the same this plane. Is not like, like, yeah. I don't have to. I mean, it's like, I, I, again, not to return to Beyonce in every episode as like a reference point for every other conversation. But like, this is Lemonade. This well, is JLo's Lemonade. <laughs> it is lem it, this Lemon. This is see. It's a Lemon. <laughs> it is a Lemon. <laughs> um, we talked last week about Beyonce being a conceptualist and that her conceptual work extends to video. Yeah. And this is clearly a play for that, but let's, I mean, I'm trying to be generous here. What if the rollout was an actual theatrical film or like a Netflix rom-com three weddings, yeah. three weddings and a comeback or whatever. Sure. Semi-autobiographical. Yes. And it's funny and it's punchline-y and it's, she doesn't have to play herself. She doesn't have to wear the sort of like, the pain of the breakups and the alleged or alluded to abuse and so on. So the biographical just, stuff. Yeah. The Castle Hill. Did you like the Castle Hill oh, subway stop oh, cameo? Yeah. Yes. That's, uh, I think that was filmed in this room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, she doesn't have to wear, you know, the, the gun dropping out of the waistband, like yeah. all this. Like she didn't have to wear that on her own face. Yeah. There's a version of that that's a great film. But the thing where it's like I'm doing therapeutic purging in – like on camera, but mm -hmm. I'm also doing it in the script mm -hmm. and it's all. You like the music? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you're adjusting your collar. Uh, there's some. Cracking my neck. There's some struggle moments. Uh, musically? Musically. <laughs> vocally, <laughs> lyrically. Uh, you really hear the the technology in the same way that like you see the, the yeah. technology in the in the film. You hear the tech. I mean, it sounds like honestly, it sounds like country music. It sounds like a lot of contemporary country music in terms of the intensity of the vocal filtering. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not in the arrangements, obviously. Uh, yeah, it also has. Sometimes when I think famous people write about their lives they want to be faithful to the details, but 
the details are not necessarily like what makes great pop music. Yeah. So you hear the clunkiness around the like raising two kids or right. like whatever. Three like, marriages, two kids. Right. Whatever. Like something yeah. that's like, this is a fact. Yeah. Just because a fact is true does not make it an artful lyric. And even if it was an artful lyric, it's like, how are you delivering that lyric? There's a man. <laughs> can I call out just a couple other highlights for me? And then we can continue to talk about it on a meta level. Because yeah. I do think it's like something we're going to get into in this episode is like we have a lot of pop stars like waving their hands, being like, notice, notice me, notice me. Like, how do I? And, and also, frankly, it's such a glutted marketplace. Yeah, how like, do you I need to do that? roll out an album without an organic viral hit or moment? Yes. Correct. Um, J-Lo at one point is wearing a shirt that says, endangered species yeah. and that felt very like to me i'm like mm -hmm. you think this means one thing but really it's, this it means, means the other this this yes so uh you I, want it to be one way <laughs> but it's the other way she looks great i think dancing the, great dancing was impeccable yeah dancing was impeccable um i thought styling was really really good yeah. even if i didn't necessarily love it felt a little costumey but it's like <laughs> a little cost. I'm trying to be nice here. Um, it was a little cost to me, but like, I feel like it looks expensive, like it looks expensive in the right way. And it looks expensive in the wrong way at the same time. At the same time. There's the scene in between one of her breakups where she's watching the way we were yeah. like, they licensed yeah. a clip, uh, with Barbara and Redford. Yeah. And yeah. Redford. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Zodiacal council notes that she's watching it every night. And then you get this dramatic zoom out, and it's like she's watching a movie about love in an empty yeah, mansion. Alone, yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, that. I, that like made me chuckle. Like I'm, <laughs> that felt a little self. Like yeah. I just like so. There's we're dancing around the word camp. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like they're they're they're. Yes. You could imagine camp. You could imagine <laughs> cult midnight movie screenings of yes, this. Yes. It's it. But in ten almost, or fifteen or twenty almost years, not absurd enough. I don't know. I don't know. Can you imagine watching it's this not with your funny. closest maybe friends? Maybe it's absurd. <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's absurd, but maybe it's not funny. It's not funny, but it could get there. I think time I could do... time could make it funny if anyone's going to see it. The other thing is, like, this is on Amazon Prime, and like, we could wake up tomorrow, and it's just, just like it never happened. Absolutely smoke from the internet. Um, I feel like we're being rough, and. Look, not everything that pop stars put out is great. Not everything that your favorite pop star puts out is great. Unfortunately, we happen to be the ones who say it, uh, and that doesn't endear us to a lot of people. Um, I do want to say, as I was watching the film, the things that Jennifer Lopez is doing really well, she continues to do really well, and I was like, what is J-Lo Mount Rushmore? Like, what are the things that, she will be remembered for. What are the things that are indelible? Um, and she has a, a lot. I, and that's the thing, like, which is She's frankly what 30 makes, plus year career. And which makes this thing yeah. way more vexing. <laughs> yeah. Because you expect something like this from a star with less sure footing. But, but I obviously, think she, but her it's music the career, yes. and also I think she's so famous and so in the stratosphere that like there is not, some disconnect yeah, there. Yeah, there's no, not touching the ground Yeah, at all. so, but, but like, fair enough. All right, J-Lo, Mount Rushmore. Like, few, to throw a few things out. Yeah. Um, obviously, in Lemon Color, Fly Girl era to start. Sure. First of all, we have a new Fly Girl coming all the way from Bronx, New York, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Early J-Lo. First public scene yes. in J-Lo. Um, Selena. See, I movie-wise, I'd take Out of Sight over Selena by far. Out of Sight. Out of Sight's on there, too. Um, but if we're doing one J-Lo film? Oh, I think there's so many. I agree. I agree. But if it's one if, if it's one movie it's, star J-Lo performance, you think it's Selena? Or no. You think it's if it's sight? one, it's either yeah. Out of Sight or it's Made in Manhattan. Okay. See, for late J-Lo, I'd take The Boy Next Door. Tell me about uh, the point because I don't know that I've seen it. I saw it in the theater. Uh, she takes up an affair with her 19 year old neighbor. Uh, he gifts her oh, right, right, right. a the first neighbor, right. edition of the Iliad that he finds at a garage sale. <laughs> Cool. Um, they, I think actually they could show this uh, as a double feature uh, when we do the midnight screening of This Is Me Now in in a decade or two. I do realize, have you seen Gigli? 
Uh, I have seen G. I have but not, not in a long. time. I have not. Uh, if I was willing to stay up later last night, you would have watched. I would have watched. This. Maybe that's yeah. what I should have done instead yeah. of failing to fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll watch that tonight. Um, on the six. On the six, yes. Um, J Lo has some great music, like that run in the two thousands. Love don't cost a thing. That Jenny stuff, from the lock. incredibly solid. A lot of great singles. You remember the Irv Gotti interview about doing these records? Anyway, we'll come back to that. Um, I do also want to say. Jennifer Lopez as a judge on American Idol, which is not something that I'm, maybe people don't even remember. She was on for a couple seasons. This is like in the pre Lionel Luke Katie era and the sort of transitional era. Um, incredible empathy. Mm-hmm. She's a great emotional connector. And also, like, she used to do this thing, and I think Steven Tyler was also really good at it. But, like, when she was looking at the person performing, I was like, you're seeing the matrix. Like, like when I watch other judges, I'm just like, are you even, in, you might as well be on your phone. Right. But like when she was looking, I was like, you're seeing the matrix, you're seeing the full package. You're like, she, is this person a singer? Are they a dancer? Are they a natural uh, effusive talent? Like what parts, like six of this, two of this, four of that? Like she saw it and she spoke as a realist. She was just talking about what it would actually take to become famous and i think for someone who came from an unlikely path started as a dancer became a pop star and became a major actress understanding that like you have to work with unexpected component parts to build a whole thing she was able to tell that to like some 17 year old from alabama yeah like her thing is hard work her thing is like showing you how hard she's working whether it's in love or in music uh and i think that she yeah she's like she likes to to portray her own effort, so it makes sense that she would see that uh, in another person. Um, is there anything on the Mount Rushmore that you want to add? Um, let's see, J Lo, Mount Rushmore. I mean, I don't know her. Und was ist mit J Lo? Die kenne ich nicht. Does that count? Sure. <laughs> so it is. Uh... It's not her, but it's part of her. It is part. Uh, it's it's. I think it's it's one of the things she will be remembered for her long running feud uh, oh. with Mariah Carey. Are are you for Maine Manhattan or wedding planner? Which one? Ooh, I think Maine Manhattan. Yeah, I think Maine Manhattan too, but it's close. Yeah, it yeah. is close. Great run, and also like would love to see more of those. Like a movie like that, sort of what I was saying before. A movie like that, but a little bit more uh, autobiographical. Sure, lighthearted. Sure, with Ben. Love it. I'd love to see it. Why not? Netflix. Back up the truck. <laughs> it makes me wonder why she needs this pop comeback. Like, she really did totally this agree. rollout in a huge, old-fashioned way. Like, she played SNL. Did she? Okay. <laughs> she had, like... Oh, yeah, the IO thing. So she had, like, a little online thing. Like, she had everything you could possibly want. She had, like, the the, the film... She had the the old fashioned network television thing. Yeah. She had like an online kerfuffle where Io Debery, who uh, hosted the SNL episode that she was in, old old comments surfaced on TMZ the day of the re- rehearsals yeah. of her talking trash about J Lo, and then there was like many day news cycle about her apologizing. It reminded me of this, and what was funny is like J Lo played it very straight face after the fact. She said, "Oh, you know," they said, "Oh." Io came to her, tears in her eyes, in her dressing room, and apologized. Like, uh, I, I'm, I how bad so, were the comments? I, I got to so be honest stupid. and say, I got to be. You honest. didn't listen. Yeah, she was bad? just doing what we just did. You know, she's just making fun of of J Lo's Hollywood was, career is torched already. She is was like, I heard me? she doesn't even sing those songs. You know, like long running rumors about J Lo when she's getting blasphemed on the internet. Io was on pop. We had Io on podcast. <laughs> yeah, basically. Io, come on podcast. You really want to talk that talk? Um, come on podcast. No, she took it all back. Um, but what was interesting is like. JLo had this in her past. There's this old profile that I read uh, in the research for this um, on Movie Line. From okay. Movie Line. Right. Which, you know, long dead publication. Yeah, sure. But it resurfaces every couple years because she is just 
talking so much trash about every other A-list actress of the moment. This is right before Out of Sight came out. So oh. she's like fresh so off of- 98 or Yeah, she's somewhere? fresh off of, you know, Selena happened. She did like Anaconda. She did U-Turn. You oh, know, she right. Was, she big was a movies. big actress before she was a pop star. Yeah. And she goes in on Selma Hayek, Cameron Diaz, Winona Ryder. She's like, Claire Danes, uh, she's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> like She beautiful gowns Claire Danes. Like, like savage stuff. And this is like the kind of profile when people say, when people like us say like, oh, they don't do celebrity profiles like this anymore. Like Playboy interview style, both the star and the writer are just totally wiling, like yeah. saying whatever. Like it's very like he comes and she's like getting massaged by the pool and he's talking about her body, you know, like drooling over her for like thousands of words, getting paid thousands of dollars for that. Um, and then she really like lives up and just like goes to town, goes to town. And the whole thing is about how like she's so self-confident and so like I'm the great, like you can see the person that made this film being in that in as yeah. a young person sure. like the sort the sort of <laughs> chutzpah that allows one <laughs> to do what this is uh you know and she hit the ground she's like there's videos of her like at target in the bronx like signing cds from last week like she and and yet like for what? Like, this is not going to be a thing. Like, no, this it, is not going to be a hit J-Lo album. No, and it's like at the beginning we asked, like, are pop stars okay? And, and J-Lo is maybe not the exact right person to... To pin that on. Right, because she's not a contemporary pop star. But it, it speaks to the notion that attention is so precious. Yes. And even someone of J-Lo's stature, with her story, with her legacy, with her Mount Rushmore... Yeah. Is still, I mean, imagine, as you said, imagine the number of meetings. Imagine the number of calls. Like the $20 budget, million $20 dollars million. worth of meetings. For what? Yeah. And it's like in the same way that it's hard to get attention, it's also hard to like tank your career. Like in a different era, something like this might have been Gigli. Right. You know? Right. Now it's just going to be like it'll disappear into the streaming ecosystem yeah. and nobody will ever think about it yeah. again. Um, until, like you say, maybe there is a midnight screening. Popcast Deluxe, Midnight Screening, Metrograph 2035. Sure. But what's interesting to me is that we're seeing this problem across generations yes. uh, for A-list pop stars and aspiring A-list pop stars. For so. people who want to do a big tent mainstream zeitgeist grabbing thing. It makes me think of what's happening with Justin Timberlake right now. Well, at least something's making you think of what's happening with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> That's right the thing. Now. It's like because he's a little bit still running scared of what his public persona is at the moment on the back of the reevaluation of Janet Jackson and Britney Spears and <coughs> how he treated them. And so he's like sort of tiptoeing. But the result. He needs to make a confession. I mean, it's like we said this before. He needs to make a confession. And it's like he's done the I'm sorry. He's done the I don't give a bleep. You know, he took back the apology. He put out this song that sounds like a B-side from Justin Bieber's journals. Like, just like the most slight song of all time. He is on TikTok making like really uncomfortable TikTok promos. You know I was blinded by my heart, sinking from the sun. Should've never followed you this far. Now I'm in the deep end. He's teasing a new song that'll be out this week, and there's like a version where he's playing it on piano, like previewing it. After 12 hours, it had like 200,000 views. You know, just like this, like Jessica Beale's in the mix, his Ben Affleck. Like, he's like, he's trying, he's like, he's like tentatively trying everything. Please meet my Ben Affleck. <laughs> It's just like, and, and, but he's facing the same thing. It's like, this is one, this is one of the biggest stars in the world 20 years ago. What now? Like, what, like, should, should he make lemonade? Like, uh, he, he's lost. He's so lost. He's so lost. Generations turn over so fast now that like part of it is like, you know, if you're Madonna's era or whatever, like you can reliably feel like maybe if you're around 10 to 20 years, 
Oh, JLo took a huge shot at Madonna in that profile. Really? She's like, she's like, do I think Madonna's a great performer? Yes. Do I think she's a great actress? No. I act. What I do is act. <laughs> not no. <laughs> not uh, not no, no. You're not supposed to say that so, if you're Jennifer Lopez. I, and then I, you're going to go be a pop star. Yeah, but like you could say it if you're John and Joe. <laughs> it's fine. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, no, point, point J-Lo on that one. <laughs> Uh, sorry sorry <laughs> we didn't uh, but like even madonna like this thing where the video for popular with cardi and the weekend debuts in Fortnite. like this is crazy though but this is the thing madonna messed around and fell into a legitimate hit, hit. it's an actual like hit. popular is a with play with cardi and the weekend like a big song on but the radio not, all the time but it's weirdly is not, good but it is not doesn't sound like a madonna song no but it but why can't they just be grateful for the organic I totally agree hit but but then and not need to make it a 2024 version of what they would have done in the 80s or the 90s or the early 2000s it's like they can't quite let go of where they think they should be in the broader conversation do you think it's as simple as stars of that level up through Beyonce and Taylor like the pathway is just not viable anymore but and and also the needing to grasp for the same pathway. I think it's like you think there's a way to be as famous, but it's not through the same path. I think if you're Madonna and you're on this massive tour, people loving it, you just accidentally have a hit with two contemporary artists, like cash the Say check. Say thanks. Yeah, like cash the check, keep it moving, you know? You don't even have you don't then have to go back in the studio with those guys and try to like make an album that captures that attention. It's like the things that work are fleeting in this moment. Like the things that work unless you're a Beyonce or a Taylor And that's Swift. true for every that's true for older artists, it's true for that's younger what I mean. artists. And I do think we see we're seeing the younger artists struggle with a version of the same thing right now. I'm thinking of Dua Lipa and the way she's rolled out these first two singles for what seemed to be I just, her next album. What's but the, also what's the thing? A training season? Training season. Okay. I'm sorry. We have to show the art for training season. <laughs> Did you see this? Yes. It's a little on the nose. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a little on the nose. Like, you can't make art. You can't be on the cusp of relevance and then make artwork that depicts you hanging on for dear life. It's like, the endangered species t shirt. <laughs> but even that, it's like we joked about this last week multi week rollout. Also, for I a like second Dua single. Lipa, just for the record, I like Dua Lipa. Do you? I do. I like the music. Okay. I like the music okay. generally. This, I don't love this. This song had the opening slot at the Grammy Awards. It's, it's, I know. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. Weeks before the video. And then there's all these forced Easter eggs about her ex-boyfriends. Like, do we really expect people to be like, oh, this part's about Anwar Hadid? <laughs> like, oh, what is like, the other part about Trevor Noah? <laughs> there's a Trevor Noah reference. There's a bar? In the video. A, I, you, I'll take your word for it. I, I, wish, just like, I wish to not know. Why? Why? Like, Dua Lipa, you because you need touch points. I mean, this is the thing, and this is the thing that I think we have been increasingly aware of. There is no such thing as uh, big umbrella content anymore. So all stop you trying, have, <laughs> right? No, but all you have are a series of tiny touch points. Yeah, and all you can do is hope, genuinely, in the scroll that you catch someone's eye or ear. And if you don't have a thousand touch points, this is going to end up in some marketing deck somewhere. <laughs> but it's like if you don't have a thousand touch points, you don't have anything. And I think people are still thinking the only way that I can achieve the big thing is to have all these tiny touch points. And and I think what Dua is trying to do by forgive me, this is your phrase, but like QAnoning the the rollout. But like I think what they're trying to do is sort of activate that same level of fan intensity. That the Beehive is, or the Navy, or the Swifties, or the Swifties the Easter eggs, right? who are doing this partially organically and partially fed by the stars and the stars' machines. But if you're not those people who have that many fans who are that dedicated, you and can't you, you wrote the playbook, this. like yes. you, 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 they're you're doing this. You came up with this along the way. 
semi-organically. Like, yes. sure, it's manufactured, of course, when Taylor's, like, the elevator buttons add up to what the date of the album or whatever it's going to be. You know, like, that's, I, I think that's real. I don't know. <laughs> some, you know, some version of that. Tell us in the comments. Um, but, like, like, you've been doing that from day one. Right. Like It's you, literally part of. Yeah, you can't reverse engineer it. Uh, or you can try, and but you talk about these touch points, and it's like we see it even level below Dua Lipa, like the Cam- the Camila Cabello thing, where she's you put that in the note, and I literally was like, I don't know what that is. What she's like doing a lo-fi, like grainy video camera, bleached her hair. She's like becoming alt in like these teasers for her new thing. Like again, like weeks before songs not or videos. Everyone, okay, also not everyone has to have eras. <laughs> Not this every is a common misconception yes, right now. Not everyone has to have errors. In fact, most of y'all don't even have one error. <laughs> Charlie XCX, she's coming back with an sure. album. La- okay, the last album was like, I'm gonna make a big pop album. It's gonna be my last one for the major label. Like, I'm I'm meta pop. I'm real pop. And then I'm gonna go be independent. It's like. She's re-signed with Atlantic Records. And then made a TikTok about... About them trying to force, force her, her to, to make, do marketing things. Yeah. Oh, no. Charlie gets some nipples pierced at class. Charlie leaks a sex tape. Von Dutch is playing softly in the background. <laughs> this is like a meta, meta, meta. The label's trying to make me do this. Here's the list of ideas. And then you get, like, a bunch of, forgive me, like, internet-level talent... <laughs> to read those unfunny ideas you know like what like protect rachel said it that's all i'm saying none of this is none of this is working none of this is leading to anything but mockery (laughs) right Um, am i wrong no not at all i mean also i mean we didn't talk about the yeet crop circles we could talk about the yeet crop circles and again so yeet's new album uh 2093 yeah 2093 200 uh, <laughs> 2093 songs <laughs> is, is how long the album is um the first thing or one of the first things that you see about it is that they're somewhere in the midwest they did a big crop circle right um seeing of artists with one era with who's not <laughs> bothering to differentiate between but that's eras. fine that's fine <laughs> yeah um while Playboy Cardi is off doing whatever Playboy Cardi is doing, canceling arena tours and just, you know, like wearing those hats, like funny hats yeah. and Jester, cool jackets and pointy hat. Yeah, yeah. And mesh top, like all that stuff. Great. Look, Cardi looking great, by the way. Um, Who wore it better? Like Iggy said. Yes. <laughs> uh, Yeet should just take, they should just give in the Yeet tour, the Cardi dates. And just I think they might it have. In. Like Yeet, this is a, Rapper, <laughs> uh, a, a warbler. Everybody got mad at me on the internet when I was like, Travis Scott, not a rapper. Everybody got mad. <laughs> what about Yeet? Yeet's a rapper? Yeet's, got, Yeet's a rapper. Yeet's a rapper. Yeet's a rapper. <laughs> um, came up sort of uh, mysteriously, enigmatically. Yeah. Didn't show his face for a while. Turns out. Just a guy. <laughs> he's just a guy. <laughs> his name's Noah. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> yeah, Yeet. <laughs> um, but has made like an arena ready sound like quietly became yeah, maybe like, the only young rapper who could play to 10,000 or more people. Yeah. Like it's, he, he could do rolling loud himself. <laughs> he is <laughs> rolling loud. Yeah. He's all of it. He is all <laughs> rolled it. up um, <laughs> and it's loud. And <laughs> <laughs> he's got four, five albums. Doesn't matter. It's they're all like, I tried writing an album review of a Yeet album once. <laughs> Like a full, like a thousand word album review. It was really hard. Really hard. It was like a Not text a based experiment where it was all one line and one word. <laughs> like it just all blends just together. together. Yeah. Um, it was poetry. There's one, you know, it's one idea. He's a yeah. single idea rapper. Yeah. And, but his idea is really good. Yeah. And it's to, to like sound a little bit like Young Thug and a little bit like Future and a little bit like Drake and a little bit like Lil Wayne, all of whom. Minus the get together with him on this album. On the right, on the bonus version. And it was interesting the way Yeet tried to get attention, other than the crop circle. And maybe this was a logistical thing because Drake turns in his verses late, Mm -hmm. typically. Um, Sometimes doesn't make albums that he's promised to be on. You know, Drake moves at Drake's own time as as he should. Um, 
yeah, he's got a lot of bets to, to place on stake. Um, no, but the not spawn, not spawn, stake sponsor <laughs> us. <laughs> um, the album came out, the Eat album came out, and then the next day they Literally, added it was the, the Drake track. Turnaround, yeah. Uh, it was uh, yeah, deluxe album, like the the twenty fourth track <laughs> for the Eat album. I do think this may be like the apotheosis of the long every song sounds the same streaming era rap album zach Bryan. <laughs> zach Bryan, yeah yeah no like this is like to me it's like there's nowhere else to go from here this is it um but the drake song comes out you mean the the upcoming 39 song net spend album <laughs> right it's not gonna, 39 song 27 minute net spend album yeah. that's not gonna do it for you so this like actually brings a second wave of attention to a Yeet album mm-hmm. like that came out, you know, and it is one day to the next. You can lose attention for an album. Absolutely. So having attention on two consecutive days that counts. This is going to be a number one album. Absolutely. It's going to be a small number one album, but it's probably going to top the chart. Mm-hmm. The jail album is not. Uh, and he did something kind of successful, which is he brought his mentors into his world. Like to me, that's like the mark of whether a rap album is working. It's like, we've talked about do this. Do your OG show up. Do your guests it. show up and do you bring them to you or do you go to them? Yeah. And Wayne sounds amazing on this. Yeah. This is not a beat you would expect to hear Wayne on. Uh, Future sounds great on this. More natural fit for him. Mm-hmm. But these guys all seem to s- see Yeet as a peer, even though, as we said, he's just some guy. Uh, <laughs> like, he somehow survived. Were we not all just some guy? But, like, he's, he survived his mask being taken off. Yes. Like, literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here he is like quietly the new rap superstar that people have been asking for. Knowing that we were going to do an episode about how hard it was for people to get attention. I think something that's been striking over the last couple of years are, are artists who seem to arrive. I mean, dare I, I mean, I don't want to use the term organic, but like seem to have a tremendous amount of success coming out of unexpected places. They, it is as close to bottom up as as it can be as opposed to the top down stuff. And we were looking at the Hot 100 the other day and like if I had told you like three months ago like the number two and three songs in the country were going to be by Teddy Swims and Benson Booth. Yeah, you had to look, you just had to look <laughs> up his name. I was about name. to say Mid-sentence. <laughs> That's the That's- level of anonymity we're talking here. <laughs> unthinkable benson boone yes correct um teddy swims lose control which has been growing for a long time Benson Boone, Beautiful Things, which is a bit of a TikTok thing. These beautiful things that I've got, please stay. I want you, I need you, oh God, don't take these beautiful things that I've got. The Benson Boone record is a very fast ascent. It's like Foa Kahan, a little energy, and then it turns into like kind of like a loud early 2000s rocker midway through. Uh, Teddy Swims is doing scrapey blue eyed soul. Have you gone through the Teddy Swims covers? I've not gone through the Teddy Swims anything. <laughs> I've heard the song. First of all, my guy used to front like metal bands and like hard rock bands, and he, he has gauges mm-hmm. and he has plugs. Mm-hmm. I don't, I think he's taking them out for his new fame, mm-hmm. but like, uh, he used to have cra- There's a, 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 a video of him with a bandana, like hair, like a, just a thin hair, like a little, little mohawk. Yeah. But not vertical. Like yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a mohawk, po- a mo- motel, okay. a mohawk pony, okay. uh, barefoot singing Shania Twain songs, like on a truck or something. Like, 
all the signifiers were really jumbled. Anyway, but I think it's an interesting it's an interesting jumble of all American music in the 2000s or 2010s. Anyway, um, how are Teddy Swims and Benson Boone the number two and three songs of the country? And I think about this in stark contrast to what we've just been talking about, which are incredibly famous people trying to identify pathways to broad-based recognition. And there is something to be learned, I think, from how these two artists have bullied their way to the top of the charts. Basically. Not even bullied, though. Like no, this just, is the that's only true. way. It's not even fair, right? That's this that's is the only unfair. way that things happen. And I just think trying to do it any other way, especially trying to engineer it, you if can't. you're past your peak, it's it's a fool's errand. It's just like you can't compete with this. No, and frankly, your best hope, I think, if you're a legacy artist, is to hope some 15-year-old on TikTok finds a song of yours, thinks it's hilarious, and, like, puts it back in the zeitgeist. Or just double down and feed your people. Don't even bother trying to do something on the scale of this J-Lo film. Can you sing me two bars of Teddy Swim's Lose Control? <laughs> I can't sing you anything. Um, you got a song this week? I do. I have like a palate cleanse. I palette also have my. Song. I also have a palate cleanse. But you go first. Before we get into the song of the week, I want to just do a quick correction for last week. Oh my god! We had a conversation. We should have led with this. We had a conversation. And this is about how it's hard to pronounce artist names that you see on the internet. Can you just talk to camera? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Streaming services. Free idea. The name at the top so of the many, page. So many free ideas. So many free ideas. Here's a good one. The name of the artist at the top of the page should be clickable, and it should have a pronunciation by the artists themselves. I know these artists come through your office. They beg for playlist placement. Put a microphone in their face. Have them pronounce their name. I said my artist last week, <laughs> I said his name was McG. <laughs> McG. McG, which is also the number five on the Happy Meal list of McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. McG, like the director of Charlie's Angels. Who did not, you saw the comment yeah. that you. So I'm doing a, a, correc oh a correction God. within the correction. McG did not direct the pilot of the OC. He produced it, he was busy. <laughs> and McG, the singer, <laughs> we're told, is pronounced McGee. Even though this man has I, a project I, earlier in his career called <laughs> Pronounced M C G E E. To be fair, that's McGee. But could also be McG. Phonetically, G E E is G. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. That's McGee. It's not, phon it's not spelled phonetically. I will say in the text chain where this was revealed to us. You still didn't know McGee or McG. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't. I had to have it like voice memoed, but yeah. also maybe he. Should just change it. Yeah. Uh, MK dot G E E. Great album. I've been listening to it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Check that out. Joe apologize. It's pronounced McGee. You keep saying Kahan. We know for weeks now it's Khan. It's my new Billy Eyelash. This man said it's his my, name is Noah Khan. It's my new Billy Eyelash. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're bringing it back. You know a name I can't say? Laney Wilson. Yes. Laney Wilson's Grammy back. Award winner, Laney Wilson. Grammy Award winner Lainey Wilson coming back. Uh, I think her last album was 2022. Yeah. She's got a song called Country's Cool Again. Crazy timing. Really good timing. Legitimately good timing. Someone needed to write this song after country music's year last year. Why not Lainey Wilson? I came to Lainey Wilson with a little bit of hate in my heart. Because of Watermelon Moonshine, and yeah. it's such a direct rip off of Strawberry, Strawberry Wine, Wine, one of my favorite songs of all the time. Incredible song. A very important song in my can childhood. We just, can we just play a little bit of Strawberry just Wine? Just a little bit of Strawberry Wine. Deanna Carter. On the banks of the river, on a well beaten path. It's funny how those memories they last, like Strawberry Wine. It's 17. But then I started listening to Watermelon Moonshine so much, and now I see it as a loving tribute, even though Deanna didn't get paid off of it, as far as I can tell. It's the Miley Cyrus flowers yes. to Bruno Mars? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I like this new Laney Wilson song. It's the same thing where it's like, it's so obvious, uh, but it's the right time, the right place, right sound. It's like a, it's like a country music theme song. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it should be in the ad for like, Hey, you want to move to Nashville and be a country star? And then like this song kind of like pipes in the background. Country's cool again. For what it's worth, country is always cool. Just want to put that out there. I never wavered. Others had wavered. I never wavered. Just want to be very clear about that. Um, okay, I have a palate cleanse for your palate cleanse. Uh, <laughs> so I was scrolling through New Music Friday, and like every now and again, it's like you encounter an artist, name you haven't heard, but usually they're like at number 58 or 77. Or lower, yeah. yeah. This is at number 10, I think. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, what? Slipping, slipping. I hit play. Ah, this is a smash. This is a smanger. This is an absolute bop. Is that what got to number 10? Yes. Uh, what do you know about- <laughs> Not that the ranking of a New Music Friday is always accurate. <laughs> Sorry, but... <laughs> yeah, we don't take that seriously. Um, what do you know about John Summit? Tell me. John Summit is a deep house producer. This is like extremely like EDM core. Like this is- uh, Brooklyn Mirage energy, right? Like, um, it's pop. It reminds me of early 90s club pop, but delivered through the framework of what I imagine Deep House has evolved to sound like now. <laughs> okay. Like, I, and to be fair, I am I am a tourist in this world. I spent a lot more time in nightclubs in the 90s and 2000s. Uh, a lot of this music has become, to my ear, like, incredibly trite and corporate and like forgive me it's it's a silly way to talk about music but these songs are by design produced to within, within an inch of their life and so because of that very rarely does something come along that feels like it has like a pulsing heart this has a guest vocalist name is hala hala tell john how he mispronounced it and then we'll do it again next oh. episode this song is called shiver and it effing goes. Can you feel it now? And I feel it now. You make me shiver. We have a special and potentially violent snack of the week this week. I bought this at the same place that I bought the the gel, the sour gel that the we tried. Sour gel, yeah. Like I said, this is a place upstate that had a lot of. I mean, I would say esoteric candy, but like, I don't. I'm not. First of all, if there's a place where we can buy like 20 things that are of this, tell us where to go, because I would like to try increasingly weirder things. And this like, this is pretty weird. This is pretty weird. I, I think it's actually. If I had to guess, I think the actual taste of it's not going to be that exciting. But as process, this is weird. So this is called Magic Potion. Sure. It's a mystery flavor. It's one part liquid, and then it comes with a little packet attached to it. The packet seems to be the flavor tablet. and you Like flavor dishwashing detergent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, are we sure this is edible? Yeah, this is real, uh, real Tide Pod energy. So the instructions say, introduce the tablet, wait five <laughs> seconds, and then number three, would you dare to taste it? <laughs> so I'm going to mix this up. Give us a if little this is forward. our last podcast deluxe, I just want to say how much I've enjoyed it. If this takes us out, all right, it's a way great way to go. There's three flavor tablets. They all seem to be identical. Okay, how many am I going to put in our magic potion? All of them. Okay. No, no. What? You, there's is there some version of this where you, I if you if you could only handle one tablet today, I would do one tablet. I I do want to say I've not had any food today. Oh god, this is going to be so damaging on an empty stomach, but. This is, we do it for you. All right. This is the tablet. What do they look like? They look like a sweet tart. Okay. No logo. No. Thank you, the Naomi. The way we like it. Thank yeah. you, Naomi Klein. It's the way we like it. All right. One, one's in. 
Wait, it's hold it up. Is it fizzing? It's fizzing a little bit. Oh, okay. It's fizzing like an Alka-Seltzer. You see that? Okay. All right. We're cooking. Um, I'm going to read you the ingredients. Do you think it's going to change color? Okay. No, it seems like it's going to stay yellow. But I'm going to read you some of the ingredients while we uh, wait for it to cook. Uh, sour. It says sour water. <laughs> it's <laughs> that, ingredients. That's the, 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 the product is called sour water. Water, citric acid. Oh, yeah. Malic acid. Yeah. Bunch of words I can't pronounce. Aspartame, potassium sorbate, preservative, artificial flavors. Uh, red 40, blue 1, yellow 5, yellow 6. Uh, Warning. Uh, Excess uh, consumption may have a laxative effect. <laughs> uh, and we're past the best before date. Just yeah. For the record. No. I mean, look, this is pure science. It's like, this is pure. Oh, okay. It's getting, yeah, really it's getting fizzy, like, like near the top. It's yeah. Like peach color, maybe? Yeah, sure. Um, all right. Are you ready for me to pour it? Yeah. You don't want to wait for all the flavor. It's, it's going to like volcano. It's yeah. Getting close to the top. Oh, up and I'm going to pour it. All right. Let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you giving me all the bottom wash? Uh... Did the pale I'll redistribute a little bit. It's fine. I don't think we're drinking it in full. Oh, I'm going to shoot the whole thing. <laughs> Come on. You got to shoot the whole thing. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> you just left me hanging like that? I'm going to do it. I'm just. I'm t- <laughs> if it comes out your nose, it's going to hurt. Did you smell it? It doesn't smell. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it smells like citric acid. It smells like Fabulosa. <laughs> <laughs> Drink up. It's quite flavorless. Yeah, it just tastes like dirty water. <laughs> it just tastes like dirty water. Sour water. <laughs> it's not that sour, though. Is it? I have no idea what the mystery of flavor it's like, is. <laughs> it's like anonymous. Ugh. Definitely just burnt something. Uh, it's like anonymous citrus something. What's the real failure of this candy is I don't think there's any way to find out what the mystery flavor is, and it doesn't taste like anything, so we can't even get the answer. Yeah, I mean, that was like a lot of fun process. But Huge anticlimax. It's a zero. It's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's a zero out of ten. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's not I a snack. Enjoyed, I, I will say this. No, it's not a snack. I, also, I enjoyed... Greatly, the process. Yeah. Maybe it's a one for process. It's a zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> That's our show. Uh, as we said before, uh, subscribe on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash popcast. Press the button below. We're on TikTok at Popcast Deluxe. We're on Instagram also at Popcast Deluxe. Every podcast ever is at nytimes.com slash popcast. Um, email us at popcastnytimes.com with questions. We're going to do a mailbag episode pretty soon, so start sending questions in for that. Um, also, tinyurl.com slash podcast discord or podcast Facebook. That's for the discord and the Facebook group. Um, the t-shirts are at it's the podcast.myshopify.com and the assorted uh, custom merch is on Zazzle. So type podcast in the Zazzle and you'll find it. Um, our senior producer is Soria Roque doing double duty today. Uh, Jamie Haffitz is our editor. Special thanks to Karen Gans, Noel Galogli, Leslie Davis, Pat Gunther. We'll be back next week.